in the lowest level of the dungeon Nan can, the most difficult dungeon out there, we're not even the most capable of people like heroes, geniuses and even holy knights couldn't do anything because they couldn't even come halfway, a man wearing nothing but a cape and trousers walked ever so confidently. The only class that could possibly do that was the tamer class. The tamer opened the final boss's door and stepped inside. A dark silhouette was levitating mid-air and once it heard the tamer, the beast turned its head around and looked at him. The beast was a buff monkey and the tamer asked the monkey whether he was the final boss. That question clearly infuriated the monkey, but it would probably attack nonetheless. The monkey was flying on a cloud, roaring very loudly while it was swinging around his bamboo stick. So if you didn't realize so far bros, the last boss of this dungeon is none other than Son Goku. Anyways, the tamer was alert and was anticipating the attack of the monkey. The monkey firmly grabbed his weapon and unleashed a barrage of attacks and it felt like the stick multiplied into a hundred sticks considering its tremendous speed. The tamer was able to dodge the barrage of sticks coming at him from above and while he was busy dodging the attacks he thought to himself how the usual method wouldn't work that time. The monkey stopped, gripped his stick really tightly and then extended the stick with such force that it nearly killed the tamer who dodged it in the last second. However, that seemed to be the tamer's plan as the stick was now stuck in a giant slime which was under the tamer's control. The tamer's eyes emitted a strong will as he ordered his slime to awaken its powers. He also summoned another beast called Rich, which was a small bumblebee that hit the monkey directly in the head. The monkey retreated a bit before attacking once again, but now the monkey didn't seem to do any tricks with its stick. The monkey jumped at the tamer and he used his stick as a sight, but the tamer barely dodged it. As the attack missed, the tamer saw the devastating effects of the attack. Not only was the swing lethal, but it even sent out a trail of air that sliced everything in its path. And the monkey was becoming angrier by the second, but the tamer had enough as well. He decided to end the battle right then and there, and he summoned some creepy looking beasts called Yoguntos, and they used a special move called carpet bombing. The monkey looked up and he was frozen with fear, his eyes paralyzed as he got a flashback of Hiroshima and Nagasaki as the rain of bombs were coming from the ceiling straight at him and he knew he could do nothing to dodge them. The dungeon was lit up from the consecutive explosions and the beasts got large amounts of experience points for defeating the strongest boss in the dungeon. That was one of the traits that distinguished the tamer class from any other and it made it overpowered. Whatever experience points beasts got from the battle, all those points were also at the same time shared with their tamer and vice versa and so that way both the tamer and his beasts were getting insanely strong together. The tamer was amazed at how much experience points he and his beasts got from the monkey king. And the second trait that made the tamers overpowered and legendary was a special magic spell that could amplify the levels of tamed beasts which could make the beast go from common beasts to legendary beasts in a matter of seconds. And the name of that technique was Awakening Evolution. The tamer class with these two traits was undoubtedly the strongest class there was and our main character had the privilege of being one. He went to his tamed beasts and congratulated them on a job well done and they all looked very happy with what they've just accomplished. But their happiness wasn't coming from a successfully completed mission and a clear dungeon. The tamed beasts were happy that they were about to get some snacks and we all know that rewards feel better after some hard work. The tamer reached into his pocket and took out a bag of special beast chips which were so delicious that every tamed beast would fall in love with them after just one bite. As his tamed beasts were enjoying their treat, the tamer turned around and curiously looked at what was left from the monkey king and he was eager to find out what his battle spoils were. He strolled around the boss room a bit and he found a nimbus cloud which was a great means of transportation which could carry both the tamer and 
all of his tame beasts at the same time. And next to the Nimbus Cloud there, the tamer found the so-called Ruhi Staff, which the Monkey King wielded. The Ruhi Staff was special because it could both shrink and grow at the will of the person that wielded it, and it could extend almost infinitely long, and the way it transformed, and the speed of it was faster than the speed of sound. The tamer used his storage magic, and a black portal appeared right next to him. He put the Nimbus Cloud in, and as he was putting the Rui staff, he couldn't pull out his hand, and as much as he tried, harder and harder, it seemed that something was pulling him in. The tamer's eyes grew larger with fear as he realized what was happening. He knew that that was really bad, but he couldn't have ever imagined what would end up happening to him. He was completely pulled in, and the portal closed off. The tamer was falling through empty space, and all around himself he could see his memories. He could see some pictures and scenes from his life as a tamer, and everything was changing really fast. It felt like someone else's memories also intertwined with his, and that someone probably experienced the very same thing that happened to him, and was probably pulled in after an incident with storage magic. That person ended up being reincarnated in another world in the end. As the tamer was falling, he wondered whether he was dead and the only thing on his mind was that he still wanted to go on numerous adventures with his precious tame beasts. The rate of the scenes and memories was increasing ever so slightly and at that point everything was moving so fast that the tamer couldn't make anything off of it. As he was thinking about all those unconnected memories, it was as if he had felt his head hit the ground and he woke up as a little boy named Valius who was in the middle of being bullied by other kids. Our protagonist didn't really seem to care much about the kids that were bullying him because he was surprised he was pretty much alive. But everything was still so confusing. He was in the middle of a forest, which he knew wasn't the case because he just fought the Monkey King inside the Nankan dungeon. But not long after, our protagonist realized that he was indeed the 8-year-old boy that the other kids referred to as Valius, and that realization hit him hard. What he had just seen as he was falling through empty space in his storage portal were actual memories from the boy, the memories which were now completely his. And as he continued to lie down, the leader of the bullies asked him why he was so quiet with a mean look on his face. Valius realized that he knew who he was and he recognized him as the son of some lord and his name was Prinzel. On top of that, Prinzel's class was Holy Knight. Valius looked at Prinzel with a determined look on his face and Prinzel looked down on him and called him Mr. Useless Tamer, which angered Valius even more. Valius was ready to defend the honor of his class and he stood up for himself by asking Prinzel what he meant with what he just said. But Prinzel wasn't phased at all and he simply replied that everyone in the world knew that he was correct and that tamers were really the most useless of all classes. And suddenly Valius remembered. He thought to himself that insulting a tamer wasn't a really smart thing to do because they could probably finish you off in a matter of seconds. But as he was thinking how his class was the strongest, he suddenly remembered that he was in a completely new world and in that world the rules were not the same and tamers weren't actually the strongest class. Valius understood that he indeed got into a storage portal accident which had really small chances of ever happening, one in a hundred millionth chance to be exact, and Valius realized that what ended up happening was that he was indeed reincarnated in another world. Valius understood his situation, and as Prinzel and two more boys were having fun mocking him, he realized that he needed to carefully take in the situation. But if that was his only problem, he could easily deal with that, but Valius could sense something coming straight at them from the forest. A pair of shiny eyes was approaching and as everyone now turned to see what it was, a huge boar was walking on his two legs towards them. Upon seeing the beast, Valius immediately realized that there was the same beast like that in his previous world, while Prinzel drew out his sword and added that he wouldn't be stopped by a measly pathetic orc. Prinzel went on the attack as Valius shouted that that beast wasn't an orc, which was completely true. The boar was called Zoo Peiji and it was still a child. 
Although it looked exactly like an orc, there was a huge difference in strength. These beasts could easily fight off two adult heroes even while they are little. And not soon after, Prinzel realized that for himself as his attack was deflected and his sword broken in two, leaving him speechless and paralyzed. Velius looked strangely confident, but he didn't have any tamed beast he could use to fight with Su Peiji now. Velius was slowly getting up to his feet and he thought to himself that it would be even hard for him to run as he was in the body of an 8 year old boy. However, one thing would be more pathetic than anything and that was to die right after being reincarnated and he refused to let that happen. After another memory came to him, Valius realized that he had no other choice and that he needed to try something which even he himself didn't know what it was, but if they didn't do anything, they would certainly end up dying. Prinzel was paralyzed with fear and he couldn't move his legs. The two boys that were with him were also afraid that Valius was the only one that remained calm and collected. Beneath his left hand, his storage portal appeared and Valius reached in and took out the staff. He immediately got a flashback from his previous life and it seemed that it was the famous Rui staff that the Monkey King dropped right after he defeated him and just before he had an accident with his storage portal. Seeing the staff made Valius believe that he could indeed win the fight. Valius took a fighting stance but Prinzel called him a useless tamer and told him to step back. Even though Prinzel was afraid, he wasn't taking his eyes from the Zoo Beiji and he took his broken sword and regained his will to fight because he wasn't going to be stopped by a mere orc as he told himself. Valius was amazed by his determination, but something else took away his focus. The Zoo Beiji opened his hand and from his storage portal, the beast took out a black book. Upon seeing that, Valius got scared, but Prinzel gained a false sense of confidence and he rushed forward. Valius tried catching him to stop him from attacking Zoo Beiji, but he was already out of reach and his broken blade was just about to make contact with the beast. The beast didn't seem phased at all by that attack attempt, but Valius knew that what it was doing was casting a stun spell which was very effective. It would stun all enemies in the beast's vicinity once it was cast and Prinzel soon found that out. Valius got ready and he grabbed onto his Rui staff and he planted it into the ground with one end sticking towards the sky. Prinzel was stunned mid-air and the beast wounded him with his special technique called the Scripture of Terror. Valius understood that the beast was on the attack and Prinzel was the first to get hit as he was closest to the beast. Valius ordered his Rui staff to extend and he propelled himself into the air dodging the beast's attack. Valius knew that if he were to be hit with that, he would have remained paralyzed. While he was hanging on to his huge staff, he had an idea. If he had a staff from the previous boss battle, he must also have the Nimbus Cloud and without a doubt, once he reached into his storage portal, the Nimbus Cloud came out and Valius stepped onto it. Valius was now firmly standing on his cloud and he overlooked the entire situation. Prinzel was knocked unconscious and the beast was still filled with rage. And even though Prinzel bullied Valius just moments ago, Valius couldn't let him die right there in front of him and therefore he had decided to help him out. The beast was preparing a fireball spell while Valius crouched and he placed the staff onto his shoulder and held it like a bazooka. He was aiming at Zoo Beiji and was waiting for the right moment. The beast hurled its fireball spell at Valius Yes, but he dodged the attack with little effort and at that same time he extended his Rui staff. The staff exploded faster than the speed of sound and it cleared out all the smoke that was in the air, finally hitting Zhu Beiji in the neck, knocking it down on the ground. Valius managed to kill the notorious beast in one single hit. The beast fell to the ground and Valius still wasn't sure whether it was really dead or whether it was pretending to be and he came down on his nimbus cloud to inspect and investigate. Once he came to the dead beast, he saw he gained so much experience points and he knew he had killed Zhu Beiji which made him really happy. But his work wasn't finished as he wanted to take Prinzel somewhere safe and he tried putting him on the nimbus cloud 
but he just fell through. That was when Valius understood that some rules in that world were the same as in his previous one and the Nimbus Cloud could only carry its master and his tame beasts. In before my bro actually tames another human being. Wait, we had that in America a couple of hundreds of years ago and it wasn't good, so we don't need it anymore, okay? Okay, back to the story. Valius carried Prinzel to a tree, but he still had two more unconscious kids and he wondered what to do with them. And while he was thinking of how to transport the other kids to the tree, an older man appeared out of the forest because he had heard some loud noises a couple of moments ago. The older man didn't think he would see anything extraordinary that day, but he saw Zubeiji lying on the ground and he couldn't help but ask himself whether it was Valius who defeated the beast. Valius shyly smiled and said that he indeed had beaten the beast just moments ago and he asked the older man's help to transport the two boys back to the tree and the man agreed to help him. But the man turned his head around and saw Prinzel who was the son of the lord he saw him there and the man told Valius that they would have to hurry as Prinzel wasn't breathing at all. The man placed two fingers on Prinzel's neck to check his pulse but he wasn't getting any signals and if that continued nothing could save Prinzel except a high-ranked healer. Valius moved the man's hand out of his way and he decided to act as there was no time to rush Prinzel back to a healer and Valius decided that he was going to heal him all by himself. Valius took his ring finger and it looked like as if he had stabbed Prinzel's heart and he extended the other four fingers. What Prinzel was experiencing was called agonal breathing and it could occur to anyone after a cardiac arrest. Valius only hoped that he could use his healing magic with the body of an 8 year old because he knew that he could never massage his heart. Valius stood up, extended his right arm and electrified it with magic and as he came down he struck Prinzel's chest and had used heartbeat restoration magic. Prinzel's heart immediately sensed that and he, Prinzel, coughed up some blood from his injuries from Zupeiji. Valius explained that the spell worked like a defibrillation device and it sent electrical signals throughout the body and after checking Prinzel's pulse he could sure sense something now. Valius explained how that was a pretty basic spell for tamers but he also had a backup plan if that hadn't worked. Meanwhile he thought that he would need to use up more mana but that wasn't the case and all was well in the end. The older man couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't believe that he had just witnessed a tamer use healing magic. Valius explained that it was a normal spell for any typical medical purposes and that it was thought in school. But another funny thing is that our protagonist never actually had any memories of Valius going to school. The old man explained how he never before heard of such a spell and he added that he was never that into magic and Valius thought whether that man was an actual representation of the rural people in this new world he got reincarnated to. The old man and Valius dragged the bodies around and they placed them on top of a cart and as they were walking towards the kingdom, the old man was really sure that Valius was a tamer because of his black hair. That's how it seemed to work in that world. The color of your hair determined your class and there was nothing you can do about it. Except maybe dye your hair? Hmm? You didn't think about that? Maybe they don't have dye in this world. Anyways, the man explained that pink haired people were usually healers, dark haired people were tamers, blonde haired people were holy knights and red haired people were usually heroes. But the old man added that all the tamers he ever knew were pretty disappointing and he asked Valius where he was from. Valius tapped into his memories and responded back to the old man that his village was on the way to the famous millennium tree and the old man said that he knew where the place was. 
the old man told Valius that he had heard that there was going to be a training course for tamers and Valius was immediately interested. The old man told him it was kids friendly and that he should definitely check it out. And Valius seemed happy with that idea because that only meant one thing and that was learning more about tamers of that new world. They continued walking a bit more and they finally arrived to a well-guarded house and the old man said that they got to the lord's house where they would leave Prinzel. The maids rushed towards them to help them and once they put Prinzel onto a couch to rest, the old man said that he needed to go as he had some unfinished business but he then asked Valius to report everything that had happened to the lord. Valius thanked the old man for help and he was gone. A young butler came to greet Valius and he showed him a meeting room where he could wait for the Lord to come. Valius entered the room which had a big desk and only one chair was visible. To be quite honest, it looked more like an interrogation room rather than a meeting room. Now we see our protagonist waiting at the reception room of the young Prinzel's home and then the door slowly opened and out came a man with a peculiar face and he then did a slight bow and apologized to Valius for keeping him waiting there. The man then recognized our protagonist as the one who saved Prinzel, who we learn is this guy's son. Prinzel's father then said that even though Prinzel was a bit aggressive, he was still his precious child that he cared about and wanted nothing bad to happen to. Valius then told the man that he just happened to be there and Prinzel's dad thought that our protagonist was just being too modest about it. The man then told Valius that he heard him using some interesting healing magic and he wanted to know more about it, but our protagonist told him that it wasn't anything special but just a common magic spell for daily life and then he proceeded to explain how the whole process of that magic worked which basically resulted in him being able to emit an electric wave that could massage the heart. We could see that the man listening to all these explanations was getting a bit overwhelmed as he never heard of such a spell but he knew it was working because his son had seen its effects. Prinzel's dad then told Valius that aside from using that interesting spell, he also used chanting, which was a method that was considered to be pretty outdated in this world. Our protagonist calmly explained that he was using chanting because in that case if he used the electricity directly it would be too powerful and in that way it would be dangerous. And so, by using chanting, the proficiency of the caster wouldn't affect the power level of the spell. Valius then continued saying that it could be deadly if the target would experience an electric shock during the heart massage. The man was really shocked and impressed that our protagonist had such an in-depth knowledge of these kinds of things. He then told our protagonist that he had met a few young talented individuals, but he had never met someone with such a flexible and rational mind like his. It was his first time that he met someone like Valius. He also said that he would like to write a recommendation letter to the Elite Academy for him and our protagonist had no clue what Elite Academy was. Prinzel's father then asked Valius if he was a tamer and our protagonist was a bit uncomfortable with the energy of the man once he asked this question and so he asked him if there was any problems with him being a tamer but he was thinking to himself that even in this world tamers seemed to be looked down upon which was very unfortunate. The guy now sweating quite a lot from the nervousness he felt proved Valius fear right where he told our protagonist that even though he was still too young to know those kinds of things, being a tamer was considered to be quite unlucky for anyone and even though he expected this to be the case, Valius still felt unprepared to be brought to a world where he'd face same things. Prinzel's dad continued saying that in combat, 
Tamer's physical and magical powers were inferior to all other professions, and although they could tame monsters, it was almost meaningless since they could only control monsters weaker than themselves, and this was why this profession was considered to be the worst one in the world. And now we learn why this guy felt uncomfortable and nervous, and it was because you commending someone with that profession, such as our protagonist, would be an embarrassment to him and people would laugh in his face and also from this Valius realized that it seemed like the issues with the tamers ran much deeper than he initially thought. Now that it was getting pretty late, our protagonist said that Prenzel's condition was probably already stable enough and so that he had to go. Prinzel's dad apologized to him for keeping him that long and he also offered to take him home saying that the carriage was ready and waiting for him but Velius told him that there was no need for that and he thanked the man and his maids for everything. He then with a snap of his finger summoned Nimbus and then when he jumped on it told them that there was no issue with him traveling by himself since he was by himself and then with just a push he started gliding on that cloud further from them and as he was moving away from them he bowed down and this really looked so smooth that both Brinzel's dad and his maid were in shock seeing this and then all of a sudden our protagonist just shot up in the night sky with such a speed that they could barely follow. What they just saw was still difficult to digest for them so it took them a moment to go from silently shocked to being utterly and completely shocked with Prinzel's dad profusely sweating and his maid screaming her lungs out to the point that she fell on the ground. As he was helping her get up she then asked Prinzel's dad if it was common for tamers to have such mysterious equipment and giving a searching glance in the sky he told her that it wasn't and that he actually never heard of such things which was why it was also surprising for him as well. He really wanted to know just who Valius was as he definitely wasn't an ordinary child. He also never heard of a healing spell defeating the zoo Beiji as that was non-standard in so many ways but thinking about what was standard for him gave him an idea that our protagonist just had a non-standard approach to things which was exactly why he should seriously consider recommending him to the Elite Academy. Meanwhile, we see our protagonist on Nimbus and he was thinking how he wanted to know more about the profession tamer in this new world where he woke up in. He heard that there was a class for tamers and the next day we see Valius telling his mom that he would go outside and his mom wished him a safe trip. Our protagonist sat outside on his new journey in search of a new adventure and new knowledge about this world and his first stop was to check out the other tamers but he was in for a great disappointment because when he got there the first thing he saw with the tamer class was one of the tamers fighting a monster and it was a difficult and bloody battle that resulted with the tamer getting hurt really bad but the beast was in a much worse condition. And this is where we learned that in this world tamers would use contract magic to make the beast their servant once they were in a weakened state which meant that they would have to first beat the hell out of the monster before they were able to tame it and all this would happen with the loud cheers from the audience watching this brutal show. Now makes you think about Pokemon and how it isn't so family friendly after all. They're basically beating Pokemon up to near death just to enslave them, just to use them to fight in front of other people who are cheering or booing however well you perform while you're fighting for your life almost. If you're a Pokemon, that is. If you're a human in that world, you have it pretty nice. Now back to the story. The second display of how tamers worked was a kid jumping really high and then using his momentum to give a really heavy blow to a slime. And then when the slime got into that weak state and couldn't fight anymore, the kid recited his magic contract on it to capture it. And he was so happy with it, just like the crowd recognized his success with their cheers. And while our protagonist was observing observing all this with a shock on his face, he was thinking that this was much worse than he initially thought. 
He was actually disgusted and started covering his face with his hands and telling himself that he simply couldn't watch this brutality any longer. The thing was that the definition of tamers from Valius world were completely different, where what they were doing here would just be called monster abuse, and in that way, there was no chance of awakening evolution, it would be simply impossible. And now, as he recalled, all the memories of his relationships with his monsters, he was thinking that for him a tamer is supposed to be, but before he could finish that thought, he realized that he was still in a body of an 8 year old child, and no matter how much he wanted to insist how awesome and incredible tamers are supposed to be, the words of an 8 year old child wouldn't go that far and he would only be laughed at. So, instead of talking about it to the people that wouldn't listen to it, he decided that he had no choice but to prove it with real results, something that people could witness for themselves, as this world didn't quite understand the true nature of tamers, unfortunately. But if Valius kept showing them great results, he thought that maybe the status of tamers would improve, and he was utterly determined to not allow people to call his profession the worst profession anymore, and we could see this determination in his expression. And so, the first thing he thought he needed to do was to tame more monsters, and he had a plan on doing this on his way to the Millennial Tree, where he should be able to find someone suitable that could become his companion. Later that day, we see that our protagonist already arrived and there was a gigantic tree in front of him and he was thinking to himself that this was the millennium tree of this world. Here we learn that places like these were called Treasury of Tamers back in Valius Old World. We also learn that this was a place where many monsters who experienced rapid growth rates would gather and it was thanks to their awakening. But it wasn't all nice and cool, since naturally, the competition rate was really high and then overhunting became a serious problem which haunted everyone. Then we see that our protagonist leaped off of his Nimbus cloud and now found himself at the root of the enormous tree and when he touched it, he said that it seemed that despite the odds, that this tree looked pretty okay compared to the one they had back in his old world. On the surface it looked like he was just touching it, but we could actually see that our protagonist was connecting with the tree on a much deeper level and sensing the very life itself that was surging through the entire tree. He held his hand for some time on the tree and then waves of energy started pulsating from his hand and throughout the tree as if he was sending signals that would help him find something he wanted. To get an even better focus, he then closed his eyes and the pulsating intensified until he felt a sensation of a single drop reverse falling from the water and then all of a sudden there was a huge shine from one spot of the millennial tree that shone really brightly and it was at this point that Velius got his game face on and said that he found the point. Now he just needed to poke this spot for a little while. We then learned that with his method he was using natural vibration and so the tree wouldn't be damaged in that way. The millennial tree was vibrating for some time and it was doing something to the ground and then suddenly the ground started crackling and then there was a kind of an explosion from the ground just behind our protagonist and then when the dust cleared away we could see that it was a pretty bulky monster that emerged from the ground and it looked like some kind of an enlarged bug and we learned that this was actually a Caucasus stage beetle which was one of the strongest beetles with a body length of over 1.5 meters and this monster with strong looking natural armor was also called the Beetle Emperor. We also learned that it was very intelligent and was able to use telepathy as a bonus. The Beetle Monster then started approaching our protagonist in a very menacing way where each step carried weight with it but Velius just confidently stood his ground with nothing but his Rui staff in his hands. The beetle guy then came really close to Velius and then put his huge head against our protagonist in a threatening way and then told him that it was him that disturbed 
his peaceful rest, but Velius wasn't budging under the pressure of this guy's intense stare and then apologized for his rudeness, but while he apologized, he still kept his strong stance and then he added that he actually had a purpose for coming there and the beetle monster was ready to hear him out, though he looked that if he didn't like what our protagonist said, he had an intention to murder him right then and there. Valius then cleared his throat <clears throat> and then almost with a bit of an embarrassment asked the beetle monster if he would become one of his summons. This really caught the beetle monster off guard as it took a bit of time to even process what our protagonist was saying and then after a moment of silence then straightened up and told Valius that he understood and then he swung with all his power he had while saying that he understood that our protagonist wanted death. Valius saw the attack and moved quickly away from it and then the heavy blow landed on the ground causing a huge crash and damage to the ground which was enough of a demonstration to understand the extent of the beetle monster's power. We could see a huge line dug in the ground and we could see that Valius was barely able to evade this attack. He was saying that this was really dangerous and that he could finally understand why Caucasus was considered to be the strongest beetle type monster. And what was even more interesting was that even though this monster still wasn't awakened, it had this much power. But instead of discouraging him, this just made our protagonist want to have this monster more as his summon and he wasn't about to give up. The beetle monster then started winding up which made our protagonist wonder what it was about to do next and then it dashed at him with a huge force where even the big rock that was behind our protagonist got completely demolished. After the attack the beetle monster then looked around and when it saw the crushed stone it assumed that Valius had no chance against that heavy type of an attack and then said that it was exactly what our protagonist deserved for disturbing his sleep. But then as it walked away it noticed that there was something distant in the sky flying and it was actually our protagonist on the nimbus cloud and he was patronizingly telling the beetle monster to calm down and just talk to him but this just irritated the beetle monster even more calling our protagonist meat slab. We could then see huge wings coming out of the beetle monster in a snap motion as he angrily told Valius that he would completely obliterate him and then he squatted down and shot off into the sky with the speed of a rocket. When Valius saw this he knew that it was getting serious and as he didn't expect this he got a slightly more nervous feeling than before and so our protagonist also sped up on his nimbus even breaking through the sound barrier from the high speed he was on but the beetle monster wasn't far away from him. As our protagonist was rushing away from the beetle monster he was conjuring up plans to win against this monster and he knew that his Rui staff would be of great help to him against this beetle since even Caucasus wouldn't be able to take the hit from Rui staff at full power. He then quickly maneuvered with Nimbus and then landed on the ground taking his Rui staff out. The beetle turned towards Valius and asked him what he was trying to do but our protagonist wasn't saying anything and he just read the situation and when the beetle guy approached him and got the closest to him he just fired off his staff into the ground blasting the beetle monster away where the beetle monster could only see his life flash before the lights were out for him. Sometime later we see that the beetle monster was waking up and he had our protagonist in front of him, all looking like a schoolboy that just finished his homework. The beetle guy was confused about what happened to him, and then our protagonist explained to him that when his Rui staff was extended at the speed of sound, it generated so much power that it was able to produce a shock wave, which Valius used to knock him out, and he also used Nimbus Cloud as a shield against this shock wave and any other external threat. The beetle guy then all disappointed that he got defeated by a boy asked our protagonist if he wanted to make him his summon 
adding that it would have been much easier if he placed his contract on him while he was still unconscious. And to the Beetle guy's absolute shock, Valius told him that that would be meaningless to him as he didn't want to have a slave but a companion and this left the beetle guy speechless as he never heard of such a thing. He then pulled out a snack of some sort and then continued telling him that he wanted a contract that was mutually agreed upon and not something one sided and then he handed that cookie to him asking him to try it. Valius was thinking to himself that this was the greatest reward that he could give him which was beast chips and the beetle dude was just staring at that chips utterly confused with this whole situation. The beetle then asked him with a suspicious tone if he was trying to bribe him with mere food, but then seeing that our protagonist kept holding it out, the beetle monster then told him that he would give it a try if he insisted that much, and as soon as he tasted it, his eyes glittered and he was already smacking his lips as it was delicious beyond description. The beetle man then asked our protagonist if he had more of that tasty food and grabbed him by his waist from the excitement. And it actually turned out that this food was a bribe, but the beetle didn't mind him becoming his summon as long as he would give him that snack periodically. Valius told him that since it was really difficult to find all the necessary ingredients to make it, he could only offer him that snack once a month. And he also added that instead he could give him beast jelly, which also tasted the same as the beast chips, and asked the monster if that would be okay with him. The beetle monster gave it a bit of a thought and then agreed to it and this was their mutual contract being agreed upon. We see that it wasn't that the beetle guy was a pushover or anything like that, it was just that all monsters loved beast chips and to them it was so delicious that they would push aside their base instincts. The contract was now officially completed and as they bumped fists with each other, our protagonist asked the beetle monster to take care of him and the monster happily agreed. Now a little bit of time passes and we see Valius looking very happy while the kids from the tamer class was gathering around Caucasus the Beetle Emperor that was now Valius' first and only summon. One of the guys even broke his glasses because he was so amazed with Caucasus that his eyes almost fell out and the very next moment he was lying in bed and being taken care of. However, even in that state he couldn't stop talking about the strongest beetle bug there was. While the kids were enjoying Caucasus' company and admiring him, he was great. Um, my brain is going to have a stroke from saying his name for some reason. I mean, it's the way it's spelled. C-A-U-C-A-S-U-S. -C -A -S 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 -S. Anyways, <laughs> he was getting pretty anxious and annoyed and the only thing on his mind was how to get away from an army of hyperactive children that only saw him as a toy. Valius was thinking how the Tamer's education would have some troubles in the future if everyone looked at Caucasus as a toy and he could hear him calling for help. Days were passing by and Valius and Caucasus were constantly together. They spent their days fighting different beasts, enjoying their free time on Valius' Nimbus Cloud and they walked and talked, they basically did everything together. During one of their usual walks, they were attacked by a scary bug and Caucasus used his big and strong horns to slam the bug into a nearby tree. He ended up using too much force, denting the bug's head and killing it on the spot. Valius seemed very happy with Caucasus' progression and he congratulated him on a job well done. However, Valius sensed that something might be off because Caucasus wasn't acting his usual self for a while now. Valius asked him whether he had any unfinished business back at the Millennium Tree where the two first encountered and even though that question came a bit late, the Beetle Emperor thought about it. There was one thing that bothered him and that he wanted to finish and that was to settle his business with the Hercules who was another beetle bug beast which Caucasus, is co I can't, which Caucasus constantly fought against. The matter of their dispute was the Millennium Tree and who would get to live inside it. However, their fight always ended up in draws and they came to an odd agreement. The two beetles agreed that they would take turns living inside a tree every month. 
one month the Hercules would get to live there and the following month it would be Caucasus' turn. And that's what they did and they were constantly switching. Valius listened to him closely and after Caucasus was finished with his story, Valius laughed and added that that really sounded like his tamed beast. But Valius' face slightly changed before he asked his tamed beast the following question. He explained to Caucasus that there was a way that he could make him way stronger than the Hercules monster and he wanted to know what Caucasus thought about that and whether he would be willing to try that out. Caucasus heard that he could get stronger and that was all he needed to hear. He asked Valius to repeat what he had just said and Valius continued explaining to him the whole process. Valius said that in order for everything to work, they needed to develop a special bond that was filled with mutual trust, without it it would never work. Caucasus was starting to sweat but Valius asked him one more time whether he was willing to place his trust in him. A moment of silence ensued and after some time of looking into each other's eyes, Caucasus closed his eyes and smiled. He agreed to Valius' proposal and Valius was happy to hear that and he immediately went on with his idea. Valius opened his storage portal that was hanging on his thumb and he turned his hand around so that stuff could fall out of the portal. Caucasus was pretty surprised with that because he had never seen such magic before. Some stone tablets were falling out and Caucasus wondered what they were. Valius took those stone chips and said that those were all the necessary ingredients for the awakening evolution which would make Caucasus very strong. Valius drew something on each stone and arranged them properly and not too long after he said that everything was ready. He looked at his tamed beast in the eyes and they both knew that they were both ready. Valius started chanting his spell and he was calling on to some deities to grant him the blessing of power and once he finished he uttered the words awakening evolution and a big shiny explosion blasted him backwards. Nothing could be seen from the excessive brightness except from a big silhouette in the middle. Once everything was clear once again, Caucasus stood there with no apparent changes to his body. However, he really felt much stronger and he could really feel power flowing inside of him. To test out his new powers, he jumped into the air and that happened with such speed that the ground beneath him split a bit and a gust of air could be sensed. It was like a turbojet engine was running on full speed and it seemed surreal. Valius looked at his tamed beast with satisfaction and pride and Caucasus felt like he was the strongest being alive and he felt like no one in a billion years could ever beat him. Caucasus was still in the air and his silhouette was getting smaller and smaller and Valius understood that he wasn't coming back anytime soon so he shouted at him from a long distance not to be late for dinner. As there was nothing he could do anymore, Valius went back home. Because the Tamer class was special, once the tame beasts killed something and gained experience points, while Valius was sitting at home doing the usual chores and reading a book, he constantly gained experience points and he was getting a bit concerned about that because he had no idea where Caucasus was or what he was doing in the first place. Valius only knew that he was fighting and winning because the experience points never stopped coming and there were always more and more of them. Valius and his mother were just about to eat their dinner and when they felt a strong quake and everything shook with such force that they had to hold onto the table as not to fall. The quake surprised both of them as they never imagined something like that would happen and once Valius took a closer look onto his metal spoon which he held in his hand, he saw that the metal spoon was bent from the extreme pressure of the earthquake. While Valius was concerning himself with the metal spoon, he heard his mother's loud scream and everything fell silent afterwards. Valius was worried that something might have happened to her and he quickly jumped to his feet and ran towards the door. Halfway there, he saw his mother lying unconscious on the entrance and even though Valius called out to her, he didn't get any response. 
Valdis quickly ran out of the house and oh boy did he have something to see. As soon as his head was out of the house, he found himself just a couple of inches away from the scary teeth of a scary looking dragon. Although very scared, Valdius gripped onto his Rui staff and he wasn't backing off. The dragon slowly raised its head, but in the end it seemed that it was raised by someone else. Beneath the dragon's head, Caucasus the Beetle Emperor was slowly emerging. He had a very happy look on his face and he called out to his master who was now at a complete loss for words. Valius couldn't believe what was coming out of the mouth of his tamed beast, which was now definitely the strongest beetle, if not the strongest bean in this entire world. Caucasus explained that on his way back home, he had encountered a wyvern and he wanted to test his new powers against it. However, what ended up happening was that the wyvern was no match for the awakened beetle emperor and Caucasus was able to defeat it with just one blow. Valius was a bit angry at Caucasus because he didn't notify him at all and he brought home a huge wyvern, which made his mother faint and lose consciousness. Caucasus never thought about the consequences and so he apologized to his master. Valius explained that he felt a lot of experience points floating into him while he was at home and doing day-to-day -day stuff. Once he saw the wyvern, everything became crystal clear to him and he congratulated his dame beast for a good job. But Caucasus' enthusiasm wasn't receding at all and he explained how that wasn't everything and he pointed out towards the night sky. He said that there was something he needed to report to Valius and Valius turned his head in the direction of a moonlit sky. A winged silhouette was flying towards them with scary looking eyes and it didn't seem like it was stopping. Valius' face turned pale and his mouth was in the shape of the letter O. He couldn't believe his eyes and he wondered whether what he was seeing was really true or not. Both Valius and Caucasus were looking at the night sky and they were tracking the moving silhouette with their eyes. Caucasus looked happy and proud and Valius was still very much surprised. The flying thing moved at very high speeds and by the second it was getting more and more difficult to keep track of. Valius tried to follow the flying animal, but he felt dizzy after a couple of seconds. As he was getting around, he heard someone talking to him, but he couldn't see anyone or anything. Something passed by his head with such a speed that made his body move forward a bit from the draft. In front of his very eyes, Valius could see a tiny bug, nothing larger than a normal fly. The bug had huge eyes and it looked kinda cute considering it was only bug. The bug finally spoke and it said that it was a friend of the beetle emperor and that its name was Beezlebub. Beezlebub was the king of all flies. He was highly intelligent and he could speak just like humans can. Beezlebub was also great at supporting his teammates and friends and he could raise their defensive stats and on top of that he could activate special attacks for them. Valius was still surprised seeing the little beetle fly because he knew that beetle bugs rarely make friends with other beetles and he was really surprised that this beetle emperor Caucasus made friends with Beezlebub, the king of all flies. Beezlebub looked kindly at Valius and after some time he extended his finger as if to shake hands with the small fly and Valius was happy with that rare occurrence. It seemed that all of them would get along quite well together. Caucasus remembered something and he was pretty excited to show something to Valius. On his way back he found an odd looking comic and Caucasus knew it wasn't a normal souvenir but it seemed interesting to him and he hoped that Valius would like it as well. The cover had a lewd looking lady but it seemed that the comic was shrouded in some dark clouds, it felt as if it was locked. It seemed that Beezlebub could see through the lock and he said that it was full of words and that Valius would love it. Valius looked at the king of the flies and he winked at him. Valius loved novels, but the cover wasn't really promising an adventurous story. Valius was looking left and right because he would be ashamed if he was spotted looking at pictures of nude women, but he had a feeling that that wasn't the case with that book. He couldn't help his curiosity and with his right hand he touched the book and used purification magic to get rid of the lock and the dark clouds. 
Beelzebub landed on Valius' shoulder and they were both anticipating the big reveal. After a few seconds, everything cleared out and they could finally see what the book was about. The book was called Don't Give Up Your First Choice and the cover indeed did have a beautiful woman lewdly dressed, but it wasn't anything like that. The book was a compilation of previous entrance exam questions for the most elite magic academy. Someone collected all of the questions from the last 15 years and published it as a book. That was probably the only copy of that book as Valius nor Beelzebub never heard of such a collection. Beelzebub felt sad because he was expecting something else and he apologized to Valius. Valius was inspecting the book and his beetle friends couldn't see his face as it was quite dark. But as he raised up his head, he was looking extremely happy and he thanked Beelzebub and Caucasus for a perfect gift. He added that the collection would be very useful. Beelzebub was rather surprised, but Velius soon explained that after that, Tamer's education class was a disaster, he decided that he would enroll into an elite academy to gather more knowledge. Velius wanted to give them something in return for the book, and as a welcome gift for Beelzebub, he decided that he would treat them with something special. Both Beelzebub and Caucasus seemed extremely happy, and they were waiting to see what Velius had prepared for them. Valius turned around and he joined his hands together before calling out to Quillin to appear in front of him and he asked of Quillin to make an equal trade. Valius crouched and hit the earth with the palms of his hands and a loud bang was heard. Both Beelzebub and Caucasus opened their eyes from the initial shock and strong gusts of wind were blowing towards one spot in front of Valius. After a couple of moments, a large dragon emerged from that very spot. The dragon had long hair and did look grandiose. The dragon's eyes were white and its irises were in the shape of cogs and it had a piercing gaze. Quillin was a divine dragon that could grant blessings to his servants. The way these blessings worked was that the servant needed to offer a corpse of a rare monster and in return Quillin would offer an awakening evolution to one of the tamed beasts or some special seasoning that was used to make beast chips. The dragon was so huge that Velius, Caucasus and Beelzebub were just tiny shadows beneath it. The dragon turned his gaze at them and Beelzebub and Caucasus were frozen in fear. Quillin finally spoke and he asked Velius whether he wanted a special awakening evolution or whether he wanted flavorings and Velius said that he wanted the seasoning. The dragon was a bit surprised but it was his duty to offer whatever his servant wanted and he told Valius to prepare his offerings. Valius opened a portal and he told Caucasus to bring the dead wyvern and to put its corpse inside. Caucasus was still a bit afraid but he couldn't say no to Valius' orders so he took the corpse of the dead dragon and threw it inside a dark portal. Quillin turned to Valius and said that he had received and in return he presented Valius with two sealed glass bottles of the flavorings he asked for. And just like that, the dragon vanished into thin air and the night sky was once again bright. Valius, Caucasus and Beelzebub stood there and watched at the place in the sky where just moments ago a huge dragon was levitating in. Valius turned around to inspect the glass bottles and it seemed like he now had all the necessary ingredients for the beast treats. He immediately brought out a stove and started a fire and started cooking while Beelzebub and Caucasus carefully watched him from behind. Valius proudly stood over the pot and poured a bunch of different ingredients while he kept mixing them up. He cooked for some time and when he finished, he raised his hand victoriously and proclaimed that it was over. The treat he prepared wasn't actually the beast chips that Caucasus tried before. Now, Valius prepared beast jelly which was a substitute for the chips because Quillin gave him those ingredients and flavorings. Valius turned around to his two beetle bugs and told them to eat as much as they liked as that day was really special. Caucasus and Beelzebub were delighted and not too long after, their mouths were filled with delicious bees jelly and they couldn't seem to stop eating it. They all sat in a circle around the fire and they continued to camp there long into the night. Once they were finally finished eating the jelly, they stood up and started heading back home. 
Caucasus was happy his stomach was full, and Valius was entertaining Beelzebub. The king of the flies would land into Valius' hand, and he would throw him into the air like a tennis ball, and they repeated that while they walked. Valius explained how the Elite Academy was the most prestigious magic school there was, and it was a bit hard to get in and enroll. Therefore, Valius spent his days raising the number of his experience points, and being a tamer was a good thing this time, because tamers had that special ability which allowed them to share experience points with their tamed beasts and vice versa. He was doing everything he could that would increase his chances to get in even by a little. On the way home, they were ambushed by a swarm of deadly bugs and they had to fight. Even though no one would love to get ambushed on his way back home, that was a perfect chance for Valius and his tamed beasts to farm a bit more experience points. They were surrounded from all sides and directions and they had to cooperate. They turned their backs towards one another and as the deadly bugs started attacking them, they knew it was time to take action and fight. Valius wielded his Rui staff and was hitting and killing off several bugs at the same time. Caucasus was so strong that his punches broke their hard shells and they were dead in one hit. And even though Beezlebub was tiny, he wasn't harmless because he flew around looking for weak points of the bugs and once he found one, he would fly at them with full speed, sever their heads and fly away with their necks in his mouth. The battle was fierce and it continued for quite some time. Valius was once again casting spells to raise his stats and awareness so he could become more agile and he could even hit enemies that weren't in his line of sight. He could feel their presence and his Rui staff pierced trees to kill off the bugs. Valius decided that to avoid certain stereotypes against his tamer class, he would try to enroll into the academy as a sage. There was something called the profession aptitude and basically what that was was someone's inherent traits and someone's inherent inclination towards one class. If someone had the aptitude towards a certain class, that person could use spells from the skill tree from that class but without spending too much mana. And sages were special because they could use spells from all classes and professions and they used relatively small amounts of mana. Valius could probably get away with acting as a sage because tamers could acquire large pools of mana because of their experience sharing ability and that way they could imitate sages. Valius also added that people who had aptitudes of becoming a sage in most cases had blonde hair and he could fix that and bleach his hair with just one spell. And as the time went by and the seasons changed, Valius worked really hard, both studying and gathering experience points. Days passed and Valius was studying really hard. Beelzebub and Caucasus took turns in taking care of their master. He studied hard, got sick, studied some more, fell asleep over the book and so on. And four years passed in an instant almost. Valius revised what he had studied in the past four years and he closed the book, which was now full of notes and marks. His hair was bleached and he was taller than he was. He felt ready and together with his tame beasts, he set off towards the elite academy. Our protagonist was getting closer to his true goal, which was to improve the image of tamers in this world, using his knowledge from his own world to do that, as back in his original world, the tamer class was considered to be the best one, whereas in this one, they were shunned as the weakest, and Valius didn't want that to stay like that, and so he vowed to change the view on tamers in this world with everything he had. And he had his new companions to help him with this, the most powerful beetle type monster Caucasus and Beezlebub, and his first step was to enter the best magic academy there was in this world, which was the Elite Academy of Magic Education. The day before the exam, Valius, together with Caucasus, decided to find an inn near the location where the exam would take place, and it was raining outside, and we see our protagonist's mom worrying about him getting wet, but Valius told her in a confident way that he'd be fine and then took out his Nimbus Cloud out of his magic storage and when Nimbus Cloud reached certain height it created a kind of a bubble that was blocking the rain from falling on it and once Valius and his company got on it as his mom was already used to his summons he told his mom that the rain couldn't reach them in there. Valius' mom then with a big smile on her face told him that she had no clue how that worked but that it looked really awesome, adding that she hoped our protagonist would do well on the exam. I mean, she's not calling her son our protagonist, she's calling him by his name or just said 
hi my son it would be weird if your mom calls you my protagonist anyway he's <laughs> after greeting his mom they flew off and then Beezlebub enjoying himself there said that he really liked this Nimbus cloud shield and Caucasus asked our protagonist when they'd reached their destination to what Valius told him that if everything went as they planned it would take longer than three hours and as they were flying, Beezlebub noticed from above that there was a carriage stuck in the mud underneath them and once our protagonist confirmed it, he complimented Beezlebub for his good sight and told him that he would reward him for his help later and as he realized that there was no way that that carriage could get unstuck without their help, he asked Caucasus if he'd also help him for some monster jelly and Caucasus immediately agreed to do it, already jumping down. In the carriage, we see a guard notifying the passengers that look of some higher class like they are of higher class that they would only be able to continue with their journey when the rain stopped and the man with the staff said that it would be a problem since they were going for the entrance exam and so they wouldn't make it in time if they waited for the rain to stop and right then there was a slight tremor as if something heavy fell down close to them and when the guard went to see what it was there stood a huge terrifying looking Caucasus and as soon as the guard eyed him up my bro's soul left his body for a moment as he screamed MONSTER! Caucasus then grabbed the carriage and slowly started lifting it up from the mud and this commotion inside the carriage also made the passengers really nervous. The man with the staff immediately recognized that Caucasus was taking the carriage out of the mud but out of sheer panic the guard was just on his self-defense mode ordering Caucasus to let go of the carriage and threatening it with his sword. And when our protagonist noticed this happening, he was thinking to himself that he kinda expected it because monster randomly lifting a carriage after falling from the sky without any warning would naturally make that impression, leave that impression on anyone. And then he shouted from the Nimbus cloud to the guard not to attack Caucasus, which messed up the guard even more as he looked up only to see a guy jumping from a cloud, literally from a cloud. Once down, we could see that the Nimbus also came close so that it now protected the whole carriage from rain, including everyone around it. Valius apologized to the guard for scaring him and then he added that Caucasus was his tame beast and that there was nothing to be afraid of. The guard refused to believe that Caucasus was an actual tamed monster from our protagonist but seeing that he had blonde hair now, he concluded that he was a sage even though it was pretty unbelievable that someone could actually tame as strong of a monster as Caucasus was. The man with the staff then came out of the carriage, calmly saying that they should be grateful to Valius for saving their life, adding that he had no doubt that Caucasus was his tamed beast, simply because our protagonist wouldn't have his back turned towards that powerful monster otherwise. The guy then said that he didn't himself understood what was going on until he saw him come down as well, and then he handed a bag that seemed to be full of treasure to our protagonist, and Valius was utterly shocked saying how there is no need for that but the guy insisted with a smile on his face eventually making our protagonist take it. Our protagonist showing him Nimbus Cloud told him that they were traveling with that adding that they should be on their way and before they left the man expressed his desire that he wanted to meet Valius again and then with a smile on his face our protagonist jumped on his Nimbus together with Caucasus and then flew off with a really fast speed. The man with the staff and the guy that looked like his guard returned back to their journey and up there on the Nimbus cloud our protagonist was explaining how nobody should be surprised at people having that kind of a reaction when seeing Caucasus since he was huge and looked menacing and then he suggested Caucasus to shrink to a smaller size if possible just so it can look less threatening. He told the same thing to Beezlebub and after they finished munching on their monster treats that Valius gave them, they really did shrink to a smaller size and in fact they were so little that they could fit on our protagonist's shoulder on each side which really pleased Valius. After some time we see that they finally arrived to the town where the magic academy was and it was pretty busy there and so they decided to have a great time there before the exams since he now had all that money that he got from that important looking person from the carriage and so they first found an inn and after booking a room they then had a really great meal that all three
three of them enjoyed a lot and then we see that they went to bed all happy with their stomachs full. The next day we see our protagonist standing in front of the gates of the elite academy and on his face we could see that he was ready for the next step towards achieving his goal as he trained really hard to get there. The day of the exams has finally arrived and we could see that there were many applicants standing in the line to register for the exam and finally when our protagonist's turn came to register the lady behind the counter asked for his letter of recommendation and he actually got his letter of recommendation from Pinzel's father whose name we now learn to be Carmel that told him not to lose it because he wouldn't be able to get into the entrance exam without it. Valius thanked him and then took out something from his magic storage and said that he decided to give him that even though he thought that it wouldn't be enough to repay the tuition fee Carmel was paying for. Carmel then said that they could discuss that once he passed the exam as he was probably looking down on Valia's ability to get him anything of value but when he saw that the item he was being gifted was the actual rare material, the scales of Germogander, he lost his mind as that was really special but he did try to hide his over the top excitement as he told our protagonist that he appreciated it and that it was more than necessary as a cover for his tuition fee. Carmel's assistant was also hella shocked seeing this rare material and when our protagonist left his office they just stood there speechless for a moment looking at the door and then taking a closer look at the material and Carmel said that our protagonist was really one of a kind. But now back to what was going on, the first part of the exam was the written one and Valius was was pretty confident about this one as he took his seat in the examination room as he was sure that he studied everything there was regarding this but there was still a bit of worry in him as he didn't know what exam questions he would get and when the bell signified the start of the time he was already focused fully focused on the exam and we could see that while he was flying over some questions some other questions presented him with a bit of a difficulty and he struggled figuring out the right answers to it but eventually he'd remember and solve and do the questions to his satisfaction until he completed the entire written exam that made him really relieved. We could see that other applicants didn't quite share his enthusiasm and satisfaction as the exam proved to be more difficult to them than they expected and when he got outside we learned that Valius managed to do all of the questions and he knew now that he only needed to focus on the practical test and do equally well and he would be golden. Now we see our protagonist coming into a place that looks just like a coliseum and inside there there were many ongoing battles happening at different arenas. Valius's worry was that they would also have to go against the seniors which would be a bit troublesome and right as he was walking around looking for his arena where he was supposed to have a battle there was a passionate battle happening right next to him and one of the examinees got blasted so hard that he flew into the air and then fell back to the ground right next to our protagonist and we could see that the blow he received was a devastating one from how he looked as Mabro's face was completely smashed in but Valius didn't seem to be bothered by the sight of this as he just innocently looked at the confident looking girl that did this damage and the girl definitely had the menacing aura even though she looked just like any regular girl and then she said that she wasn't happy with how terrible the students this year were and when she saw our protagonist she asked him if he was her next opponent to what he said that he was as he climbed up onto the dueling arena. Here we learned that she was considered to be a top student in the entire second year and her name was Addie. Having a better look at her, our protagonist noticed that she had red hair which meant that she was probably a hero class. We could see people already cheering them on with some saying that he wasn't very lucky since she was such a good fighter and everyone was curious about what kind of weapon would he use against her and when he pulled his Rui stick, uh, Addie was actually utterly shocked and thought that he couldn't be seriously using that against her and so she asked him to confirm it but yeah Valius would stick to his trusty Rui stick as he told her that he had nothing stronger anyways. With how relaxed he looked with that measly looking stick Addy got really furious and pulled out her blade with such an aggression that the audience in the background 
piss their pants as she then said that she wouldn't spare our protagonist as she didn't like that he looked down on her using such a weapon. And when she took an attacking pose, we could see that she was for real as she was going manical with her expression and her energy as she said that he would be punished for being so arrogant. And as she casually, just casually stood there, Addie thought to herself that Valius was full of gaps and that she needed to make just one right move to end this in one go, but just as the announcement was heard that they could start a battle, we could see her sword out of her hands and in the air, and on the other side, our protagonist didn't look like he even moved. When she realized that her sword was not in her hand, she was flabbergasted because she had no idea what just happened, and as the referee was telling her not to mess about and to hold her sword properly, she was trying to figure out what the hell happened, but the only thing she noticed was that something hit her with huge speed. People and even our protagonist were looking at her as they were too confused with this, but then referee repeated that they could start a battle and she wasn't wasting too much time as she launched herself at him, thinking to herself that she would get him for embarrassing her in front of everyone like that, and she had a proper murderous intention as she read at him like a crazy person, but she was shocked to see that Valius knew how to parry and he wasn't about to let her score and any points on him. He literally dominated the weapon exchange with his superior blocks, stances and he was able to neutralize her every move as if he expected all of them beforehand. She was truly flabbergasted with the level of skills he had and then suddenly he disarmed her by flinging her sword out of her hands into the air and then finishing this battle by putting Rui on her neck. Our protagonist had a full concentration and he looked unbeatable at this moment while Addy looked really scared and confused as she was still trying to process what just happened to her but she knew that it was a game over for her so she sat down on the ground and this shocked everyone that was watching this duel as nobody expected this in their wildest dreams and in fact the judges were so distracted that our protagonist had to remind them to call the battle over. The judge managed to call the battle and as our protagonist was leaving the fighting arena, we could see that he created a major commotion around with everyone being so taken aback. As he was walking past the crowds, he couldn't help but feeling proud of himself since he managed to be the top student of the second year, however he also didn't want to get too distracted with that as the next part of the exam would test his magic abilities. A bit later, we see Valius approaching where the magic test was taking place and there were a few guys shooting magic projectiles from their hands at the target and they all had their different styles where one would shoot the magic from his palm, the other one from his finger etc. Our protagonist got to see how it was supposed to be done while he was waiting for his turn and then when his turn came the instructor told him that in order to pass that part of the test he had to hit all the five targets using his magic only and as our protagonist quickly assessed the situation he thought that this test might be focused on power and he had an idea of what kind of magic he'd use for that and then when he started chanting with some hand movements the instructor noticed that this was more serious and got a bit nervous. The chant continued, becoming more and more dramatic with every new line, where his final words were BBQ arrow, and then he shot an enormous precise force from his hand right where he was pointing at, and then as one thin dark matter hit the middle target, suddenly the dark energy branched out, hitting all of the targets at the same time with so much force that it blasted everything that was behind the targets as well. While he saw that he got bull's eyes on all targets, our protagonist started celebrating while we could see that the instructor was utterly petrified, saying that the targets were completely destroyed. As Valius was walking off and thinking of all the scared faces of other applicants, including his instructor, he realized that he wasn't supposed to destroy the targets at all, but just hit them, but it was still a great display of his 
enormous power and control over magic with the destruction he left behind. But since he overdid it, Valius wanted to make sure that everything was fine and that he passed the exam and so he went back to ask the instructor if everything was okay and the instructor, still slightly shocked from what he just saw, told him that since he got all of the targets hit, he did pass the magic test and then he added that he was just surprised with his way of chanting as he never heard it like that before and our protagonist slightly puzzled with the instruction not knowing about the true chanting, then told him that it was just a way of manipulating his voice to lift any limit he had and release as much power as possible. The instructor still looked lost, saying that he never heard of such a theory, adding that it didn't really matter as he passed the exam and then he gave a piece of paper confirming that. Three days later, we see our protagonist together with a crowd of other applicants, all waiting at the announcement board trying to find their name and number on it and when he saw it he was really happy because he passed it and he was now officially accepted in the academy and as he was having his own little celebration the guy he helped with the carriage appeared next to him and he immediately recognized our protagonist saying that he was the child that helped him. They both seemed pretty pleased to see each other and then as the guy realized that Valius was a candidate for the academy, he asked him if he was happy with the results and after learning that our protagonist did really well, he didn't seem too surprised since he already saw that Valius was capable enough to tame Caucasus. Our protagonist assumed that he was probably one of the professors at the academy but the man told him that he actually held a position as a vice chairman of of the Board of Education at the Academy, adding that he had the power to help out a student to advance faster through the classes once he found that this student has deserved it. And then looking at the board, he read our protagonist's number, not realizing that it was actually Valius's number, and said with a serious face that this student did overwhelmingly well on all of the tests, getting full marks on every one of them, which was unheard of until now, and then said, that he was there for him. The vice chairman looked really serious about this matter and he almost felt excitement meeting this student and then our protagonist lifting a paper with his number on said casually that it was him like no big deal and the vice chairman was utterly baffled after hearing this but then he remembered that he already showed him his power and the vice chairman smiled and then said that he had no doubt about our protagonist being the best sorcerer since he already witnessed some of his talent that time when his carriage got stuck. The vice chairman then pulled out an envelope with which one candidate could take a class exemption and then gave it to our protagonist, adding that he should use it wisely and Valius thanked him and they then parted their ways. And then sometimes later we see our protagonist getting his study books and then after officially registering, he went to get his meal at the cafeteria by just showing that he became an official student at the academy. Now Valius had to make an important decision of choosing the class he would skip and since he had his memories from his previous life, he knew that he didn't have to take all of the classes but the only ones he would need to take would be the ones useful to him to achieve his dream, which was to improve the image of tamers and improve tamers' lives in this world. Our protagonist was also aware of the fact that as long as he did his best on the final exams, that he didn't even need to attend the main classes. With all this in his mind, he took that list of all of the classes and made his decision, where if he could skip the class, it would give him time to work on his extracurricular activities and use that to promote tamer knowledge. After he did that, he summoned his Nimbus Cloud and went to the town called Merkel, where he was looking to find the Adventurer's Guild. And when he got in, the spotlight was on him as everyone was staring and he thought that it was probably because he was recognized as a sage due to his white hair. Valius then went to the counter and said to the person working there that he wanted to register as an adventurer. 
lecturer. And when he showed his ID as a student of the academy, we find out that our protagonist actually asked to be exempted from the guild's registration test, which means that he got initiated into the adventurer's guild right away and he was already granted a C rank as an adventurer. The guy then gave him his guild card and then not wasting any time, Velius immediately went to the board with all of the available quests to see which one he wanted to start with. And after going through a bunch of them and calculating what kind of quest award would be enough to cover his basic expenses, he chose one and then when he went to the counter lady to register for the quest, once she saw what kind of quest he was accepting, she told him that the quest proved itself to be pretty dangerous as many adventurers that went to bring back that material got heavily injured, where some said that arrows would come out of nowhere as soon as they touched the material, but our protagonist just smiled and told her that it wouldn't be an issue for him because he could use recovery magic. The lady was still a bit nervous about him, but as she too noticed that he was a sage, she had a feeling that he'd be fine with this quest somehow. Sometimes later, we see Valius together with Caucasus and Beezlebub arriving on Nimbus to some deserted looking place with a bunch of spiky rocks. And as they were now walking around trying to find that material, called Luna Metal, there was some noise in the distance and then our protagonist confidently asked Caucasus to deal with the oncoming enemy and just a bit after we could see that the enemies were also some kind of bug monsters and with just a single powerful blast Caucasus took care of them as if they were nothing. After his powerful attack we could see bodies and limbs of those insect monsters everywhere. Valius thanked Caucasus and as they returned to their search for Luna Metals, Beezlebub told him that it found the person that shot arrows that the lady at the Adventurer Guild's mansion, which was behind the rock. And when our protagonist turned to see, he heard some noise coming from the behind the rock and then suddenly a bunch of arrows got fired from that direction with Valius quickly reacting and avoiding all of them and then counter attacking with his Rui stick as it extended with massive speed completely shattering the rock that was hiding that archer. Beelbub was confused by this as he knew that our protagonist was really accurate and so he asked him if he missed on purpose and right then Valius shouted to the person that was hiding behind the rock telling the person that he had no intention of harming him or her at all and that they could come out safely. And then from the rubble came out a woman that had an intense stare and in her hand she held a bow so we know for certain that it was actually her that shot at our protagonist and all the other adventurers who got shot at while they were trying to recover this stone. However, the lady that was radiating with hostility towards our protagonist and his two companions took out an arrow and already had it aimed at them. Both Caucasus and Beezlebub seemed ready to take her on, but Valius told them to stand down and he then took out his own Rui staff and dropped it on the ground and lifted both of his hands up as a sign that he didn't want to fight with her. The archer lady looked emotionless and unfazed by his deed, but then our protagonist approached the archer and told her that if it goes well between them, he wouldn't mind cancelling the quest of bringing back the rare Luna medal, and then when he saw that he caught her attention with this, as she looked at him with curiosity, lowering her weapon down even, he then introduced himself to her, adding that even though he looked like a sage, he was actually a tamer, and then he introduced his two companions, tamed monster Caucasus that was showing off how tough he was and Beezlebub looking all proud. The archer lady then introduced herself, where we learn that her name is Artemis. This is I think from Greek mythology, Artemis, but I'm not sure, this is like some kind of archer woman huntress or something like that if you know tell me that in the comments below i don't remember exactly anyways after a bit of awkward silence our protagonist asked her if she was a hero but she didn't seem to be all too familiar with this term and so she started explaining how usually a red hair would indicate that someone was a hero which was a profession of a kind kind of getting what he meant by this she then told him that she actually wasn't a human at all and then something started happening around her as if 
explosive energy was being concentrated into one spot and then together with the blast that sent a pretty strong wave. After the blast calmed, Valius managed to take a peek and he was absolutely shocked to see a beautiful, luxurious looking bow in front of him as it spoke that this was Artemis' true form. Our protagonist was absolutely baffled and me with him as I would never expect this. And he was left speechless as that was the last thing, just like me, the last thing he expected how it would turn out. A bit later we see them sitting down with Artemis back in her human form where she told him that she used to live on a moon until one unfortunate day when a comet fell on it and blew her away on the planet she was on right now. She then told him that she was able to stay alive only by absorbing the Luna metal that fell together with her from the moon, since the moon she was living on was like one big source of Luna metal. Remembering how it was there, she then proudly told our protagonist that when she was there, she was so powerful that she could destroy an entire area with just one strike, but then getting sad again, she continued saying that that changed as she now just lived on scraps. And after Valius thought about it to himself, he said that he now understood her struggle and he wanted to help her somehow, but then he added that it wouldn't be enough to just cancel the quest since that won't solve anything for her. He wanted to deal with the source of the problem and as this got her undivided attention, he then said that he wanted to help her get back to the moon if that's possible. Artemis was left speechless after hearing this and then she got up all excited, getting all close to Valius and asking him if that was really possible for her to return back to her home and our protagonist told her that even though he didn't know if it was actually possible or not, he did have an idea that he wanted to try out and for that he needed her to turn into a bow and a bit later we see him equipping Artemis as a bow and putting her on his back and then they got onto Nimbus Cloud and as they were flying our protagonist was talking to Caucasus using telepathy but we learned that they weren't the only one that were able to use telepathy as Artemis too spoke to them making our protagonist feel like they were being eavesdropped on. Artemis then asked our protagonist about the Rui staff that he showcased earlier as she was interested how long the staff could actually extend. Valius told her that he never tested it out, adding that he heard that it could potentially extend up to 960 kilometers and then Artemis told him that theoretically it should be enough for what they were trying to do. However, Valius had a concern because even if they could use Rui stuff like that, they had to find a way to fix it on one place, fixated on one place so that it wouldn't move and Caucasus came up with an idea that he could simply freeze a lake using his magic with the staff in the lake but Beezlebub raised an issue that in that way they could kill all of the life inside the lake. Turning back into human form, Artemis said that she had a magic for that scenario where she could make the creatures stronger to endure the lake being frozen and from this point they seem to have found a good plan to try out that they all agreed on. Sometimes later, as they arrived at the lake, we see Valius floating right above the lake with his Nimbus cloud and as he got to the center of it, he stuck his Rui staff into it and then we could hear in the background that Artemis Artemis was working on making the creatures more resistant and resilient and then we see Caucasus using his freezing magic to freeze over the lake with the staff in it. A moment later we could see that the whole lake was frozen with a thick ice just like they planned and then they all gathered around the staff and our protagonist ordered his Nimbus Cloud to envelope them into a bubble. Envelop. Envelope them. It's not an envelope envelop, verb, envelop them into a bubble. I'm sorry for talking to myself like this. Anyways, now that everything seemed ready, Valius ordered the staff to go to the moon and it immediately shoot up with an enormous speed that was now taking them through all of the layers of this planet. As they were speeding through the sky, Caucasus made a comment of how the weather 
cloud was so convenient that they could use it even for this. And after a bit of time, we see that they already broke through the atmosphere and the Valius companions were really amazed seeing this, while our protagonist was thinking to himself that it was all nostalgic to him since he used to be into astronomy in his previous life, where he'd observed different planets and stars with his companions from his previous life. And now that they had a clear view of the space above the planet they were on, we see our protagonist shocked as he nervously kept staring at one planet which even his companions noticed. We see that the reason why he was so flabbergasted was because he saw this planet before in his previous life and it didn't have four satellites like it had now, which just served as a fresh realization for him that he was actually in a completely different world and with this he fit all of the puzzle pieces that felt kinda off for him in this new world like the fact that people weren't aware of awakening evolution or that they didn't hear about the true chanting magic and especially the fact that tamers were considered to be the worst type of professions out of all the others everything suddenly made sense to Valius as now he knew with certainty that he got reincarnated into a completely different world. That's all for today's video bros, thank you so much for watching as usual, one more time we're growing incredibly fast, I still can't believe we keep growing this fast, uh, it's incredible, it's so surreal, we're gonna reach 100k by the end of this year if we continue growing like this and if we reach 100k by the end of this year I'll be doing another special giveaway on the second channel so be sure to tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell everybody to subscribe to this channel so we guarantee 100% reach 100k subs by the end of the year so thank you so much one more time bros always stay awesome like this and peace